March 1941, Mare Island Naval Shipyard, Vallejo, California. The glow of a welding torch flickered through the dim construction bay of an unfinished submarine as Edward Ted Nelson, an eleven-a-day welder, scrawled in frustration into his notebook. There has to be a better way. Around him, scaffolding rose like a tangled forest, men sweating in cramped spaces beneath wooden decks, twisting bolts that had taken entire shifts to install. It was an archaic process, unchanged since World War I, drilling holes, building scaffolds, threading nuts, tightening bolts, consuming precious days America could no longer afford as war loomed on the horizon. Nelson, 36, had spent 15 years mastering metal, electricity, and machines. And what his Navy supervisors didn't know was that this welder had already solved the problem that plagued them all. His idea was simple. Weld threaded studs directly to the steel framework, attach wooden planks from above, no scaffolding, no bolts, no wasted labor. But when he presented his sketches to his superiors, he was dismissed. We have established procedures, they told him. To the Navy, Nelson was just a welder. To Nelson, time was running out. Rebuffed and ridiculed, he built his invention himself in a small Vallejo garage, fashioning a prototype stud welding gun with a spring-loaded plunger, an electrical trigger, and a small ceramic cap that held flux in place, even on vertical or overhead surfaces a design so elegant it seemed obvious once seen. By May 1941, it worked flawlessly. He could weld a stud in under a second, faster, stronger, and simpler than anything the shipyards had ever known. His friends told him to quit and sell it himself, and so he did. On June 20th, 1941, Ted Nelson walked away from Mare Island, leaving behind steady pay for an uncertain dream. With $11 in his pocket and $95,000 borrowed from a government loan program, he founded the Nelson Specialty Welding Equipment Corporation, determined to prove his idea could change the world. For months, sales were slow, until December 7, 1941, Pearl Harbor. America was at war. Suddenly, shipyards from San Francisco to Richmond were desperate to build faster and the same men who had ignored Nelson's idea were now begging for his welding guns. Orders flooded in. Kaiser, Bethlehem Steel, even Mare Island itself. Within weeks, Nelson's small workshop was overwhelmed. He opened a factory in San Leandro, hiring 20 workers, then 50, then 150, producing 30 welding guns and thousands of studs a day. Submarine deck installation times dropped from six days to one. By the end of 1942, Nelson's process had saved the Navy over five million man-hours. When Navy officers finally arrived to award him a citation, Captain Harrison from the Bureau of Ships admitted, Your proposal was not properly evaluated. That was a mistake. Sometimes the best way to serve your country is to ignore official channels and just solve the problem. By 1943, Nelson's company employed over 400 workers and supplied shipyards nationwide. Stud welding wasn't just faster, it was revolutionary. Every submarine, destroyer, and aircraft carrier built after 1942 used Nelson's process. Submarine construction times plummeted. Portsmouth Naval Shipyard completed four submarines in a single day, a record never broken. The U.S. built 203 submarines during the war, each requiring thousands of welded studs. Multiply those minutes saved by hundreds of ships, and Nelson's innovation had shaved years off America's wartime construction. Liberty ships, built by the thousands, used up to 8,000 studs each. At the peak of 1943, American shipyards were launching three new ships every day. Nelson's tiny welding gun helped make that possible. On May 11, 1943, the Secretary of the Navy presented Nelson's factory with the Army Navy E Award for Excellence in Production, honoring the estimated 50 million man-hours saved, the equivalent of 19,000 years of labor. We didn't do this for awards, Nelson told his workers. 
We did it because our country needed it. His technology didn't just speed production. It empowered a new workforce. As men went to war, women filled the shipyards. Rosie the Riveter and Wendy the Welder. Nelson's gun required little training, making it perfect for America's wartime workforce. By 1944, his invention was used across the Allied fleet on Essex-class carriers, Iowa-class battleships, Liberty ships, and submarines stalking Japanese convoys. Faster ships meant more convoys protected, more Marines landed, more victories won. The efficiency Nelson created translated into real combat power. Lives saved by speed. When the war ended in August 1945, Production slowed and contracts vanished, but Nelson was ready. He pivoted to civilian industry, bridges, skyscrapers, automobiles, proving that stud welding was not just a wartime innovation, but a peacetime revolution. In 1950, he sold his company to TRW, securing his legacy as the man who had transformed modern manufacturing. Decades later, his name still lives on, the Nelson brand now part of Stanley Engineered Fastening, producing millions of welding studs every year. His technology has evolved with robotics and precision controls, but the principle remains identical. One stud, one arc, one second. Today, it's used in skyscrapers, bridges, nuclear plants, and even to restore historic ships like the USS Texas and Pampanito vessels that still rely on Nelson's 1941 design. Ted Nelson lived to see his invention become universal, to watch the Cold War end, and to know that one welder's stubborn refusal to accept no had changed history. He died in 1994 at 89 years old, a quiet man who never sought fame, but left behind one of the most profound industrial innovations of the 20th century. He wasn't a general or an admiral, but his weapon was time, and he wielded it with genius. Ted Nelson, the 11-a-day welder who refused to stop thinking, proved that innovation doesn't always wear rank. Sometimes it wears a welding mask.